Something individual and personal that you would like to be prayed for today. It might be for something you're struggling with with your faith, or it might be for he healing for yourself or for someone else or something else that's on your heart that will be offered during communion as well. But also today, Sunday kids are going out. Sunday kids are going out to their groups. So who's going to come and collect the candle today? You going for it, Adam? You got here first. You get the, you get, that's your prize. And so we're going to bless one another. We, we know the drill. So we say, Lord bless you and keep you. You say, the Lord bless you and keep you. Okay. So let's bless each other. Let's bless, bless our young people. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord bless you and keep you. And may the light of Jesus fill us all today. Off you go to your groups, you're worshipping in your own way, and the rest of us, as we invite the Holy Spirit into our church today, we're going to sing, Come Down, O Love Divine, that ancient spirit-filled hymn, 238.
So our worship continues on page four of our service sheets as we come before God who is spirit, son and father in confession for our sins. I invite you to kneel or sit as we ask for God's forgiveness. So we confess to you our selfishness and lack of love. Fill us with your spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We confess to you our fear and failure in sharing our faith. Fill us with your spirit. Christ, Christ have mercy. We confess to you our stubbornness and lack of trust. Fill us with your spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may the Father forgive us by the death of his Son and strengthen us to live in the power of the Spirit all our days. Amen. So in praise for God's forgiving love, let's stand and we'll worship God in the words of the Gloria. the collect the special prayer for today this the feast of Pentecost we pray together Holy Spirit sent by the Father ignite in us your holy fire strengthen your children with the gift of faith revive your church with the breath of love and renew the face of the earth through Jesus Christ our Lord Amen so please do take your seats and we hear God's word to us today. Uh, 
I'm reading from the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 12, from verse 3 to 13. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. No one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, the discernment of spirits. To another, various kind of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same spirit. Who are lost to each one individually just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one, and as many members, and all the members of the body, through many and one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free. And we were all made to drink of one spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. So let's sing again. There is a Redeemer 805.
Alleluia, Alleluia. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples met had lo were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord Jesus. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. This is the Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, who is Spirit, Son, and Father. Amen. Would you like to take your seats? So what is Pentecost? Pentecost is power. The rushing wind, the tongues of fire. To the first disciples, Holy Spirit came as a rush of energy, filling them dramatically and turning them into something new. It was exciting, amazing, astonishing, all of those things that we heard in our Acts reading at the very beginning. And it was this power that enabled them to do things they'd never done before. It enabled them to talk in all sorts of languages. It, was, uh, it gave them the power to stand boldly in front of people and convince people who Jesus is. And as their journey as apostles, as disciples continued, it was the power of the Holy Spirit that gave them the right words to say at the right time to the right people. But if Pentecost is power, Pentecost is also gentleness. The Holy Spirit comes as gently and as subtly as Jesus breathing on his disciples. Our gospel reading showed another coming of the Holy Spirit. On the first day of, at the very first Easter, that day of resurrection, they're huddled together for fear of what lay beside outside but Jesus breathed on them. And the Holy Spirit, in Hebrew, is ruach, which means breath. And it was this ruach that breathed into Adam in Genesis, breathed life into Adam, and it's this ruach, this breath, that breathed life into the church. So the, so the Holy Spirit, yes, it's dramatic, it's exciting, but the Holy Spirit is also the heartbeat of Jesus' followers. It's the steady pulse through our veins. It is each breath in, each breath out that fuels our daily life with Jesus. And those first disciples, it was the Holy Spirit that just kept them alive, kept them going through the joys and the sorrows, the triumphs and the challenges, of which there were many, of being a Christian. But what else is Pentecost? Pentecost is courage. Take Peter. The Holy Spirit transformed him from this uh, failed uh, follower who would repeatedly mess up, repeatedly stick his foot in it, repeatedly miss the mark and not quite understand, into this confident orator that stood up in front of thousands of people and convinced them who Jesus was. And from that day onwards, the Holy Spirit gave all the disciples the courage to face anyone 
and everyone who would listen about Jesus, from the Jewish authorities to the Roman rulers to Gentile philosophers to ordinary folk and everyone in between. The Holy Spirit is their courage. But if Pentecost is courage, it's also peace. As those disciples were huddled together on that very first Easter day, they were grief-stricken, they were scared of what lay outside. Jesus came and with his spirit proclaimed, peace be with you. And it was with those words that they changed. The threat outside hadn't changed, but they had. Because with that spirit, they knew that Jesus was with them and always would be with them, giving them a sense of peace, which would be their bedrock throughout all of the threats. And there were many threats that followed in the years to come. But what else is Pentecost? Pentecost is transformation. The Holy Spirit changes things and changes things in a big way. So there were 120 first followers of Jesus, we think, in, in, in Acts. That's what we were told. The Holy Spirit changed them. But then it also changed that very day 3,000 other people to become Christians. And then in the years and the decades and the centuries to follow, the Holy Spirit transformed thousands and millions and millions more lives. In fact, you could say the Holy Spirit changed the world, and you'd be right in saying that. The Holy Spirit can do that, because amazing things come with the Holy Spirit. But if the Holy Spirit is this worldwide transformation, it's also deeply personal. The Holy Spirit touches hearts and transforms lives. And whoever you are, and those first disciples were a real range of people, the Holy Spirit touched them in ways that took who they are, their gifts, their talents, their opportunities, their skills, their resources, the Holy Spirit took them and used them in God's great story. What God was doing in the world, the Holy Spirit used each of those people individually. And that beautiful reading from 1 Corinthians, how Paul describes uh, the church as a body with lots of different parts. Each of the parts are individual. They've each got their own jobs. But together, those parts of the body do Jesus' work. So Pentecost is all of these things. And Pentecost was back then. It was the birthday of the church. It was the start of it all. And we read some amazing things that happened in the early church. But also Pentecost is now. Pentecost was not just a day that we look back on and remember. Pentecost is a movement. And what the Holy Spirit did back then, she does for us now too. The Holy Spirit is our power today. She's our power, the, the adrenaline that fuels us as we continue the work that Jesus started in the world. It's the Holy Spirit that gives us the words to say when we don't know how to tell somebody about Jesus. But the Holy Spirit is also the gentle breath of Jesus that keeps us going on our day-to-day -day walk with him through the ups and the downs of our lives, through the decisions that we make and the questions that we have. It's the Holy Spirit that keeps us hanging in there with faith when everything else is rocking us. And the Holy Spirit is courage. Holy Spirit is the courage that we need when being a Christian gets tough, when we need to stand up and be counted, when we need to add our voice to the cries of justice and truth um, across the world. The Holy Spirit is the courage that we need when someone asks us, so why are you a Christian? The Holy Spirit is the courage that we need when there's somebody that we would dearly love to invite to church but we're just too scared of rejection. The Holy Spirit will give us the courage to do that. But the Holy Spirit is also our peace. When the world around us just feels too dark, too um, threatening, the Holy Spirit is the peace that knows that we have the light of Jesus within us and that nothing can separate us and that light can never go out. 
And the Holy Spirit is transformation. We see the Holy Spirit moving in amazing ways, growing churches, transforming lives, seeing Christians make a real difference at levels of policy or of justice. Um, And our task is to join in with what the Holy Spirit is doing. But the Holy Spirit is also personal. The thing that touches us and says, I've given you gifts, I've given you opportunities, and I want to use them for my good. So whether you are an evangelist or a prophet or a preacher, or whether you are a listener, an encourager, a welcomer, an administrator, whether our gifts are the time that we have, or the experiences that we bring, or the opportunities that we have, or our connections with different people, or the money that we have at our disposal. Whoever we are, each individually, and we're all different, the Holy Spirit will take us and use us for God's purposes. So Pentecost is a day back then, but a Pentecost is our movement now. And we marvel at the amazing things the Holy Spirit can do. But she can only do those amazing things in us if we invite her into our lives. The Holy Spirit just doesn't come into us by osmosis. We have to open our hearts. We pray every week, don't we? Open our hearts. Our call is to open our hearts, to let the Holy Spirit do amazing things in us. And it's my prayer that the Holy Spirit will fill this church afresh today and fill each of us afresh. And actually, I'm kind of nervous saying that because when you invite the Holy Spirit into your life, um, unexpected things can happen. But nonetheless, it's only through the Holy Spirit that this church will grow. It's only through the Holy Spirit that we will grow spiritually, numerically, and in service in the world. And it's only through the Holy Spirit that each of us will become who God calls us to be. So what is Pentecost? It's the Holy Spirit in each of us and in our church. So today we pray, come, Holy Spirit, come. Amen. So as a sign of us, if you wish, inviting the Holy Spirit into your life, um, we're offering anointing, um, anointing with the oil of chrism, which is anointing for holy service, for God's service in the world. So Pippa and myself are here, and we invite you, if you wish, not compulsory, to come forward and stand in front of us, and we'll we'll anoint either your head or your hands, and... um, Thank you. And uh, once we've done that, if you, if you return back to your seat that way, because that's a bit blocked, that side, just for safety reasons. But um, as we do this, we're going to sing. The hymns are on the board. We're going to sing Breathe On Me, Breath of God, 236, and If Time, Spirit of the Living God. So we pray, come, Holy Spirit, come, as we sing.
now continue in prayer. Spirit of fire, inflame in us a passion for justice and equality, that we may know the cleansing of our prejudices and fears, and proclaim your freedom boldly, treating your earth with respect and humility. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Spirit of compassion, infuse us with your longing for wholeness and happiness, that we may reach out to those who are hurting or disordered, enfolding one another in tenderness and love. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Spirit of wisdom, be within us in our journeying, gently guiding us along right paths, that we may be led towards transformation and new beginnings in our broken world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Spirit of power, hold us in our powerlessness, that we may know your strength and become a voice for the voiceless, healing for the wounded and empowerment for the weak. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Spirit of gentleness, Touch us anew, releasing us from all we are afraid of, that we may know your acceptance of us and freely accept and embrace all others. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our prayer. Spirit of comfort, Draw near to all who are enduring grief, confusion and pain. In your graciousness, bring hope and healing and renewal to all who suffer, particularly to Leonard, Estelle, Pat, Janet and David, Deborah, Adam, Kate, May, Stephen, and Sally. And welcome into your presence all those whom we have loved and whose time on earth has drawn to a close. Remembering before you today, Novea Rose, Graham, and Walter, and all those whose year's mind falls at this time, especially Hilary, Hilda, Jennifer, Ronald, and John. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Spirit of life, be our light, our hope, and our joy, that we may leap and laugh and enter into communion with you. Give us confidence in life and assurance in death. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So I invite you to stand for the peace, if that's comfortable. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. 
If we live in the Spirit, let us walk in the Spirit. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. So with a smile, a wave or a handshake, we offer each other a sign of God's peace. So we're going to sing again, we're going to sing our offertory hymn as we move into the time of communion. It's 242, Come Holy Spirit, Come, and during this hymn we will be taking a collection for the ministry of our church. 242. So our worship continues on page seven. Pour upon the poverty of our love and the weakness of your praise, of our praise, the transforming fire of your presence. Amen.
So we're preparing for the time of Holy Communion. And if it's your usual practice to receive the bread and the wine, you're very welcome to do so here. Please come to the, forward to the altar rail and stand or kneel as is most comfortable for you. If you prefer not to receive wine by the chalice, that's totally fine. Each wafer will also have a spot of wine upon it. If you'd prefer to receive a blessing, please do come forward and keep your hands down and let us know uh, that that's what you prefer and we will gladly pray with you. And if it's difficult for you to get up here to the front, please let our wardens know they're carrying the staffs and that we will gladly bring communion to you in your seats. And as we receive communion today, prayer ministry will be offered by Pippa and Sonia in the memorial chapel here. If there is something that you would like to be prayed for, uh, prayed about today, perhaps something you're carrying with you, something uh, or someone of concern on your heart, or something in your faith that you're struggling with, do come forward and Pippa and Sonia will be glad to pray with you. So after receiving communion, go into the memorial chapel. If you're not receiving prayer ministry, please return to your seats past the organ to give privacy to those who are praying in the chapel. And if somebody's uh, praying already with our prayer ministry team, please just wait at the back of the chapel and they will gladly uh, welcome you when able. So our our worship continues with our Eucharistic prayer. Let us pray. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Almighty God, good Father to us all, your face is turned towards your world. In love you gave us Jesus, your Son, to rescue us from sin and death. Your word goes out to call us home to the city where angels sing your praise. We join with them in heaven's song. give you thanks for every gift that comes from heaven. To the darkness Jesus came as your light. With signs of faith and words of hope, he touched untouchables with love and washed the guilty clean. This is his story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. The crowds came out to see your son, yet at the end they turned on him. On the night he was betrayed, he came to table with his friends to celebrate the freedom of your people. This is his story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Jesus blessed you, Father, for the food. He took bread, gave thanks, broke it and said, This is my body, given for you all. Jesus then gave thanks for the wine. He took the cup, gave it and said, This is my blood shed for you all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. This is our story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. 
Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate the cross on which he died to set us free. Defying death, he rose again and is alive with you to plead for us and all the world. This is our story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Send your spirit on us now. That by these gifts we may feed on Christ with opened eyes and hearts on fire. May we and all who share this food offer ourselves to live for you and be welcomed at your feast in heaven where all creation worships you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Being made one by the power of the Spirit, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father.
So we thank God in the words of our vision prayer. Loving God, as you opened your heart to us in your Son, Jesus Christ, open our hearts in welcome that our church family may be a place for all to belong. Open our hearts in praise that our music may enrich and deepen our worship. Open our hearts to cherish and encourage our children and young people in faith. Open our hearts to know and serve our wider community with hope. Rooted in Jesus' love, bless and guide us at St Peter and St Paul's as we follow the vision you have given for our life together. In your holy name we pray. Amen. So on notices, firstly some bands of marriage. I publish the bands of marriage between Benjamin Tebby and Emily Jane Sykes, both of the parish of St Augustine's Mansfield and St Barnabas Plesley Hill. This is for the third time of asking. I also publish the bands of marriage between Simon Christopher Barlow and Claire Louise Thompson. Uh, both of the parish of St. Michael's Plesley. This is for the second time of asking. I also publish the bands of marriage between Daniel Stephen Brown and Natasha Wood of the parish of St. Lawrence Mansfield. This is for the first time of asking. And if any of you know any reason in law why these couples may not marry, you are to declare it. So Ben and Emily, you're, you're, you're complete, you're safe from this end which is great news. Right, some other notices. So please make sure you've got a notice sheet, lots of different things going on. Um, I'll just draw your attention to the fact that the net, the new parish magazine, is out on the table at the back. Um, so if you've not got your copy, grab it now. Um, you'll also see on our notice sheet um, that we have, uh, uh, we're looking for a centre manager. Kate will be retiring at some point soon. We'll ensure a smooth handover, but we are looking for a manager. Um, and if you're interested, let, do let me know. Um, next Sunday evening at four o'clock is our service of healing and a wholeness, an opportunity to come before God in prayer to ask for healing. It might be healing on a global scale, it might be healing locally, or it might be something personal that you want to ask for for yourself or someone that you love. And during that service, there's lots of different ways to pray, including prayer ministry, as we've offered today, where, where um, a pair will, uh, will pray with you as you are. And also the offering of anointing for healing will be on offer in that service too. Uh, Father James is preaching, so that's next Sunday at four o'clock and there'll be refreshments afterwards. Also, we're having, uh, on the 13th, from the 13th of June for six Tuesdays at half past seven here, we're having um, a Bible study. Um, so what we're going to do is go deeper with the readings and the sermon that we've had on the Sunday together on the Tuesday night. So this is your chance. If you kind of listen to the readings and you kind of, you've got, heard the sermon and kind of half thought something about it, um, the Tuesday evening is your opportunity with a group of friends group of friendly, other informal people, uh, to just go a little bit deeper with that. Um, also a notice about the bowling um, afternoon. Um, have you ever considered learning uh, bowling? Um, it's on the afternoon of the 2nd of July, which is our patronal festival. Um, if we're going to make this event possible, we need more people who are happy to bowl. Um, if you don't wish to bowl. Spectating is pleasant. In pleasant surroundings is another option, followed, of course, by a buffet. So on the 2nd of July, we're meeting at Mansfield Bowling Club um, for an afternoon of bowling. You can spectate if you want to, but we do need more people who say that they're going to have a go at bowling. I am going to have a go, as are my children. And my husband, you're having a go, aren't you, Matt? Yes. <laughs> Heather's having a go. Kate and Keith are having a go. Brilliant. Tina's having a go. Wonderful. So come and have a go. Um, we need to know. Linda needs to know by Sunday the 19th of June or come and speak. Linda's on the door in the blue jacket. 
So do have a word with Linda, and the tickets are £8 for adults, £4 for children, which would be lovely. Okay, birthdays. Yeah, now somebody very special has a very special birthday. This Wednesday, is that right, Mary? Yes, Mary's going to be celebrating a special... You'll tell, you'll tell everyone how, how much after the service, won't you? <laughs> it's Mary's special day on Wednesday. Really a lovely milestone. Any other birthdays coming up? Barbara Massey? Yeah. On the 29th, so tomorrow. So Barbara. Oh, of course, it's Pippa's birthday today. Pippa's birthday's today. She's hiding, look. <laughs> It's Kathisha's birthday. When's your birthday? On Wednesday. Same. Oh, you've got birthday buddy, Mary. So, anybody else? So, shall we sing to Mar uh, uh, Mary, Kathisha. Barbara, Kathisha, and Pippa? Happy birthday. <laughs> Sunday kids, are you going to come and tell us what you've been up to? So what was that then, Heather? So we spoke about the Holy Spirit today and how the Holy Spirit came down in the disciples. We were able to speak in lots of different languages. And I think Adam's going to tell you oh, okay. what we learned from that. Okay, so what did you learn? Um, that church is for everyone. Oh, it is. That's amazing. And um, what did we meet? We've got our Pentecost candles, which have hello in lots of different languages. Amazing. To remind us that church was for everybody. Um, that is fantastic. And I heard some really good. You all just said that in different languages. I heard shalom. I heard konnichiwa. Guten tag. I hope you've been learning. What's that? Oh, okay. Oh, you did it in Arabic. Fantastic. Amazing. That's really good. That's fantastic. And we learned, we were learning about the Holy Spirit as well, and we were learning that the Holy Spirit gives us lots of power and energy um, and gives us courage, but it also gives us peace. And it's the breath of God within us that keeps us going. And it's amazing that the Holy Spirit can help us to talk to anybody and everybody about Jesus. So that's really, really good. Thank you so much. Would you like to return to your seats? <laughs> and would you like to stand, if that's comfortable? So this is the part of the service. When we remember that the Holy Spirit of Jesus, which raised him from the dead and as symbolised by our candle, is passed to us to continue the work that he started. So I'm going to pray, 
And then as we sing our final hymn, we're going to light our own candles as a sign of that, that we take the light of Jesus into the world before we are commissioned again to, take, to go out and serve God in the world. So let's pray. Blessed are you, sovereign God, overflowing in love. With Pentecost dawns the age of the Spirit. Now the flame of heaven rests on every believer. Strong and weak, women and men, tell out your word. The young receive visions, the old receive dreams. With the new wine of the Spirit, they proclaim your reign of love. Amid the birth pangs of the new creation, the way of light is made known. Source of freedom, giver of life, blessed are you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. So we're going to sing, The Spirit Lives to Set Us Free, Walk in the Light, 264. And during this hymn, our candles will be lit. So God sends us out to serve him with the light of Christ and the Holy Spirit's power within us. For 50 days, we have celebrated the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ 
against the powers of sin and death. We have proclaimed God's mighty acts and we have prayed that the power that was at work when God raised Jesus from the dead might be at work in us. As part of Christ's church here in Mansfield, I call upon you to live out what you proclaim. Empowered by the Holy Spirit, will you dare to walk into God's future, trusting him to be your guide? By the Spirit's power, we will. Will you dare to embrace each other and grow together in love? We will. Will you dare to share your riches in common and minister to each other in need? We will. Would you dare to pray for each other until your hearts beat with the longings of God? We will. Will you dare to carry the light of Christ into the world's dark places? We will. Today we have remembered the coming of God's power on the disciples and we invite that same spirit to lead us out into the joys and the challenges of the world. So, my, so may Christ holy healing, enabling spirit be with you and guide you on your way at every change and turn and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. So filled with the Spirit's power, go in the light and peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.